Hey guys, welcome to the 19th episode of the Learning Podcast. And if you're unsure, it's a Singaporean podcast dedicated to learning something new from every single guest on this show. And today I have the great privilege to meet another friend from LinkedIn. His yeah. name is Leslie. Hi guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for coming all the way. Sure, sure. Like, every time when I ask a guest, right, I'm already apologize for people coming all the way to near Changi Prison because it's just next door. A couple of reasons why I think this conversation might be useful to someone out there. And Leslie here is a financial consultant, advisor, manager, somewhat in the yeah. area of selling insurance uh, policies and all those kind yeah. of stuff. So when I think protecting yourself is something I'm very, very passionate about and investing sure. is something I'm very passionate about. And one thing I really advocate for everyone out there right, is to know the policies that covers them Correct. at every single step of the way. If you are on a road right now, you get hit by a car, right? what happens to you? And you really need to know where can you even afford every stage of what happens to you? Do you have to pay your client, your clinic fee, hospitalization fee? Correct, correct. All these are very, very important steps of the way. And I think that the rep of uh, financial advisors or financial consultants probably hasn't been at least from my top line opinion right it's been not too good or not sexy as you said because yeah, yeah. previously Leslie was telling me that he wants to make insurance sexy again and that's Correct. why I think that this conversation would be useful around that for those of you who really need perhaps I would say a slight wake up call in terms of protecting yourself you should everyone should mm. another reason why i think this conversation will be useful is that for anyone out there who is interested in becoming a financial advisor leslie here has a lot of experience if i'm not wrong about eight, eight uh, years? no uh this july will be my 10th year 10th year okay yeah. so i'm sure there's a lot of things you have seen a lot of things during your 10 yeah. years right what Definitely. should people look out for when they want to become a financial advisor, sure. how can one become a good financial advisor to their clients? And I have no idea what the career route of a financial advisor is can. really. So I'm, I'm, I hope that you can give a little light onto that as well. Sure, sure. So yeah, Leslie, for those, okay, sorry, I want to sidetrack again. I think Leslie is doing a fantastic job in terms of being um, uh, in, a, in a finance space, uh, in an in a advisory space in general, yeah. because I feel that all financial advisors should definitely make use of the medium, a digital medium of promoting themselves. Correct. And I don't see many people out there do that. They mostly rely a lot on word of mouth, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. And yeah, I, if I was a financial advisor, I would be creating content all day long, like yeah. every, every, like all day long. And lastly, he himself has created a lot of content as well, revolving around financial planning. Um, let's say if you're new, if you're, if you have just given birth to your child, what are the kind of policies that you need to know at every single part of our life stage, right? I believe that he has created some kind of content dedicated to educating you on what policies you should cover yourself with. Hmm. Sorry for re like re re renting all the way. Sure, uh, sure. Leslie, for those listeners that don't know who you are, could you give me a very quick introduction of what you're doing? And sure. So uh, my name is Leslie. I've been in uh, the same company for the last nine and a half years. I've wow. turned the 10th year in July. Mm. So uh, I've been staying, I've been loyal or I've been in the same company for the last 10 years. So I've seen a lot of things happen. Which company are you from? I'm from Prudential actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happened is if you heard the news recently about this uh, case, about this, uh, this person that was being sued by Prudential for uh, instigating a move from Prudential to Aviva, mm. I was part of the organization. Mm. So I was once part of the top organization in Prudential as well. Mm. So I feel that uh, the reason why I came out to do all the videos and everything was to really bring real value to the consumers out there. Mm. The truth is, am I trying to garner more clients uh, through that? Actually, not really. The reason being is because I really want to make financial planning more sexy in the sense because uh, a lot of content, quote unquote, content being drawn out, right? It's yeah. with the intent to sell. Okay. And that's very, I would feel very... Ple not pleasant. I can't mm -hmm. find the word. Uh, very, for the lack of better Pernicious, word, uh. <laughs> I would not know. For the lack of better word, I would say it's a bit disgusting. Okay, well, it's that's like a, a strong word. Yeah, but I can't find of a better word right okay. now off my head. But it's more of like the, uh, okay. I think the word is distasteful. Okay, wow, well, atas distasteful. It's distasteful because it's like uh, I'll tell you this, 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 this. Then I'm like, you should buy insurance. They're like, mm, mm. okay, so okay. your so the free content comes with a hook immediately to sell sell me something. But mm. I believe that the the best sale to be done mm. is an educated sale. Yes. Whereby you know what you're buying, you understand it, what, you go, what, what you're doing. Mm. So by the time you buy it yourself, you also understand and appreciate the work I do mm. and how it works. Mm. Because I feel that right, a lot of times, right, insurance, right, uh, people are not against insurance, but they're against how it's being sold. Mm. 
And that's the bad rap that we as advisors or in consultants, be it in what company you are, what destination are being given, mm. planner, advisor or mm. consultant, are being 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 in this stigma, social stigma that hey, we are like cockroaches, mm. we are like um, we are annoying. But ultimately the key thing is that we really want to bring value to people's life. Yes. Our job is to enhance your assets mm. or to br- uh, create value for you, mm. be it monetary or mm. in any other way. Mm. So that is what I believe in. Mm. And through me, through the videos, I, I mean, I need to do like three videos, mm. but I have a list of other videos that I'm doing as well that I'm mm. trying to slowly churn up because as you see, we are already heavily regulated by MAS. So yes. a lot of my scripts had to clear through our compliance comp department. Wow, before. that's quite complicated. <coughs> so every video that you do, you need to test it. I mean, you need to check it. Let someone sure. else check it. Yeah. Okay. So there are certain videos that are like, for example, the recent one I did was mouse versus cashback. Mm. It was just my opinion. So to the company, you say, oh, this is our outside your core, our core services. Mm. So you can say whatever you want. I mean, I'm not saying you say whatever you want, but like they will not have any uh, objection on that. Mm. Of course, they will just say that, you know, make sure that your facts are correct, uh, is factual, mm. you have your sources there, everything mm. so and so forth. La. I mm. think that's that's not, that's fair. Mm. And as we progress, this is really true. Where a lot of people uh, bring in the fact that to understand insurance, it's all online. Nobody goes on to read a full article on why should I buy insurance anymore. Mm. Uh, because I feel that the, the w- I, I feel that the word for, the word for 2020, right? should be convenience mm. because that it says whether you're doing whatever business you are right convenience has been uh, I, ai has made convenience the keyword that everyone looks for ai as in like yeah. how artificial intelligence how oh, does okay. uh the the digitalized digitalizations of everything mm. has made convenience the key mm. because it's like why book why don't you flag a cap why don't you why uh, like why we don't flag caps and we book grab yes Cost might be around the same. Yes. Take away, we take away the points and everything, but mm. it's the convenience that is key. Mm. I, I when I go down there, I, when I go down to my house, my door st- uh, my doorstep, there's mm. a car waiting for me. Mm. So, the least friction we have, the easier it's being transacted. Mm. So, but for me, I do it that way. Is I want to give you so much value to the point. Uh, in a way, I, I do what Gary does. Mm. I give you so much value to the point, you feel so guilty that you have to buy from me. Yes. And that's what I truly believe that I really just want to give you true, uh, helpful. true, true, helpful value to you. And if you choose not to buy for me, it's perfectly fine. Mm. But at least I'm able to change the perspective of how insurance is mm. and let you understand, uh, have a better understanding of what the basic of insurance should be, mm. or maybe like just, um, the basics of it. Yes. So even if you meet a, an advisor or a consultant, you know what to ask, mm. what to look for, mm. what am I supposed to look at? Yes. And rather than you expecting the advisor to be able, because as advisor, sometimes if you're new, there are certain things that we may not want, uh, may not remember to say. Mm. Not out of uh, mis-selling, not mm. trying to hide things, but just- A negligence. A negligence. Mm. We are human after all. Yes. We make mistakes. Yes. So. And sometimes it because or maybe due to uh, time constraint. Mm. For example, maybe you say you are a very busy person. You only have that one hour to spare with me yeah. to do financial planning. Mm. So, how much can I cover within that one hour? Mm. A true financial planning can cost can can cover three, four, couple five of hours, hours, couple of hours. Just important things that you need to. Yeah. So there's for. so many areas and aspects that I need to cover in. But mm. if you're giving me that one hour, mm. I can't do much. Yes. But if you have consumed my content enough. Mm. Be it you're meeting me or you're meeting someone else, mm. you already have a, a heads up yes. to know what's what you're getting yourself into. Yes, you're educated in that sense. Yeah, again, educated sale is the best mm. sale. Mm. Then you also know what you're looking for. So when you go down there, you don't be the, am I buying the right thing? Yeah. Am I doing the right thing? Skeptic is it? In a yeah, sense. yeah. In a sense, you're not you're less skep- skeptical. Yeah, you have you're more aware of what's going on, mm. and. Uh, and from another angle, it's if the person is trying to smoke you and trying to, you know, like trying to not do the ethical way of doing things. Yeah. So you, you also can question him, like, why is this done this way? Yes. Because every advisor has a way of or, or a direction of their uh, values or or the way they want to sell things. Mm. Or how, not, I don't say sell, but how they propose things. Like, mm. I personally believe, like, 
uh, I be- personally believe whole life plans over mm. investment linked plans. Yes, that's where I, where, I, where where I stand. Okay, but there some people believe in investment linked plans mm. over whole life plans. Yes. So, but you want to know why? And oh, I explain okay. or the way why I think this is better for you. Mm. My explanation of my recommendation, mm. and you see from that, do you agree? Yes. If you don't, then okay lah, so be it lah. Because it's a healthy uh, discussion. Correct. What correct. Correct. Plan works for you. Correct, correct, correct. So I think it's very important that we have the kind of conversations where, uh, again, I think we are still not very matured mm. as a society in Singapore that in terms of insurance because a lot of things are all product pushing. Yeah. Which is, I agree that because after all, it's, it's sales and everything. But beyond that, right, the relationship that we built as uh, consumers and mm. me and my clients is very very important and I really truly treasure it mm. like I have clients with me for the last 8 years last yeah. 9 years and we be we go beyond friendship we go beyond like client client customer relationship it's mm. more like friends really they, they invite me over for their uh, uh, like uh, baby b- baby birthday it's like this month uh, like end of the end uh, like, like in fact tonight I'm going to my friends my client slash friends place, mm. or client turn friends place to play board games mm. and drink wine. Yeah. After their baby slept. Mm. Uh, after the baby has slept mm. at 10 30 pm. Mm. So that is my life now. Mm. And I really enjoy it. Mm. And I really want to bring more value to them. Mm. And that's how it started for me to do this. Because I really I got uh, actually in fact I just shared this uh, post I think this morning or last night that a lot of us, in fact, uh, to any advisors out there, uh, the truth is that a lot of us enter, uh, attend conferences, attend trainings, buy books, do so many trainings and everything, right? It's just to make us feel good. We attend a lot of trainings. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm also jumping all over the place. No, no, no. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. Because like, <coughs> at least for me, I know on Facebook, or at least I yeah. know friends that run Facebook ads yeah. and the targeted people are financial consultants on how yeah. to get better clients or all, all those kind of stuff. Sure. And can you tell me a story? Because how I see financial advisors sure, right, sure. is similarly to how I see policemen, doctors, in a sense whereby like, you meet clients at a point which is when something really bad happens to them, but mm-hmm. you're like that savior in a sense. I mean, Can you like in your whole experience? I'm sure, sure. you had the experience where the story of how the, uh, of of a story that reminded you that what the products I'm selling and pushing out is really making a big tangible difference to people's life because that's what I believe that yeah. all these policies can do. And I'm sure I'm not sure of your results or why you are a financial consultant. Of course, I'll go into that as well. I want to ask you why, Me, but yeah. but why become a financial advisor? To give you a background, like. I I think I I was smart lah smart mm. uh, when I was in primary school mm. so I didn't study much I got mm. quite decent results for the PS for my PSLE mm. so I was deciding whether do I go to a good school good secondary school but in in the middle class thing, uh, like not the best class like yeah. one of the mid the, the mid tier classes mm. or should I go to a neighborhood school but in the top class. Mm. So to me, it's like a, I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond in that sense. Okay. So I said, okay, let's just go to another school. Uh. Unfortunately, you know, I was too smart. Mm. You know, uh, there's always saying, uh, 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 oh, okay, okay. you know, this Hawkins saying, la, but uh. I don't, uh, it's very weird to say it out loud. Yeah. But so basically, I was too smart for myself. I went to that school because of bad influence. I, I really did very badly for my studies. Mm. So I from Express, I dropped to normal acad. Then at N levels, I did very bad. I did work for very bad for my prelims. Mm. So after that, I went to uh, and that that point of time, I had like for prelims, I it's the best three. You need to get like ten points and below for yeah. N levels, mm. and I did seventeen for seventeen for my prelim. Okay, which is like uh, as good as like like, like you're dead, you're dead already yeah. like, like your end of life already. Yeah. I don't know what else I can do in life already yes, yes. So. Uh, my teacher uh, and my dad uh, on, sep- on separate occasion, uh, two separate occasions came to me and tell me that you know what if you don't want to study you'll just quit school that's what my dad told me uh. and the other teacher will say that uh, why are you why are you destroying your own life uh. you shouldn't be doing this you're a very smart person you're very smart mm. you should not do this mm. so that gave me a wake up call you know, I cut down all my vices like mm. vices in the sense that I don't have much vices in the sense but more of like skipping school mm. Playing, uh, not doing my work, my mm. homework, not mm. studying, mm. hanging out with the bad, hanging out with bad friends. Mm. So I stopped all that. Mm. So I just focus on my studies. Secondary what was this? Sec four. Sec four. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So at sec four, I did that, 
and I got seven points for my N levels. Shit, which, which is seven like a, points. Yeah, which is like damn crazy. So okay. like, uh, there was this like teacher who didn't believe and went to check to double check whether it was my results. Yeah, because I really just focused on the three few subjects that I really mm. like. I could make it. The rest I couldn't. I just I so be it. Bangkang, Bangkang. I just yeah. give up, give up. Because I didn't have enough subjects to go O levels. Mm. So I decided to go ITE. Mm. So I did two years in ITE. I did very well. Mm. I went to Poly. Mm. Um, because Poly, you know, you meet girls, oh. you, you 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 start to have more distracted. distracted I got distracted again. Everyone of us has that part, la. Yeah la, So we got distracted. I got distracted. I didn't do very well for my uh, diploma. I think it was two point three or two point seven. I can't remember mm. around around that range. Mm. So then I have to go to army. So during army, I was telling, telling myself, okay, I need to get a degree. Mm. But unfortunately, because of my circumstances, my dad wasn't uh, uh, wasn't like like earning a lot of money. And mm. we are very uh, humble family. Like yes. we don't earn a, my family. My dad don't earn a lot. Mm. So my dad only could afford either a tertiary education for my sister or the degree for me because mm. I wasn't working. I mean, like okay. NS, the pay is like shit. Yeah. How how much can I pay? Yeah. So I really needed my father to take a loan for me to mm. take a private degree. Yeah. So I told myself that, you know, so be it. Let my sister get the tertiary education, which is her diploma. Well, I go and figure things out. Mm. Because after all, I'm the elder brother. I should mm. not give up that. I should take. I should not take away the opportunity mm. for my sister to have a decent education yes. at a point of time. Mm. So after which, definitely she, uh, she studied. And I, then by that point of time, I was still thinking to myself, you know, uh, be guys my age, uh, I'm slow by them by four two years yes. because I went ITE. Yes. Girls my age, I'm slow by them by four years. Yeah. Two years ITE and two years of uh, NS. Yes. So I asked myself, what are the things that I want to do? Mm. Sell car, sell insurance, sell property. Mm. Because that is the three uh, professions that I could actually earn beyond my qualifications. Yes. I'm not. I'm not. Ju- I'm not like kept or being judged by You're my. Not limited, la. Limited. And it really depends on your skill to be able to sell stuff. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. <clears throat> and I always feel that I have uh, like all the part time jobs I've been doing all this well. Always say that. I always tell me the, the the supervisors always tell me that I can talk. Mm. So I thought like it's just very natural of me to move into sales. Yes. But I realized that it's it's a total different ball game altogether. Having able to talk and able to sell, it's two different things. Mm. It's really two different things. So were you a natural closer when you first I w- started? Or? I would not say I I would I wasn't and I don't think there's such thing as a natural closer. Mm. It's the and I w- always feel that right, if you think that you are a natural bond sales you are a bond salesperson, you are a natural closer, I to be honest, I think it's a bit bullshit. Okay. Because ultimately people buy because of energy. Yes. The exchange of energy, yes. the exchange of values. Yes. Because we are aligned, mm. because we think alike, mm. that's why I buy from you. Mm. The product can be shit. The product can can be not as good. Okay. But because we had that synergy, yes. we had the same values, and you believe in the product, mm. naturally I'll believe in it and I trust you. Mm. So the product it's not significant, to be honest, I feel that way. Okay. Of course, if you have a great product, mm. it makes things a lot easier. But what I'm trying to say that to be able to be good at selling, mm. it's all about how you talk, how you carry yourself. Yes. And those are trained. Mm. If if you're not trained natural closer, right, you can be one, mm. but you will not be, uh, it's not sustainable. I, I'll feel mm. that way. Mm. So between the three choices of selling insurance, selling car, selling property, yeah. why insurance? Okay, why insurance? Because uh, first of all, it's because of target audience. Yes. Like I can, my youngest client can be 14 days old to 60 years old. True, 14 days old, oh my gosh. Yeah, like my, yeah, yeah, yeah I, know, I know. So uh, in terms of property, like you say, we just talk about you, for example. I yes. also can't sell your property today. Yes. It's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you, you're not, <laughs> I'm not saying you're not, but to, to transact at that level, right, you need yes. to have it like at least like for one new property, right? Yeah. You're looking at at least like 250K cash. Yes, yes. And that's cannot be your, you cannot be emptying your bank account just to buy one property. Right? You yes. still have some, you still have to have some uh, sort of like uh, emergency funds mm. and some spare cash before you can do other things as well, because that's excluding a lot of other things. Yes. So, not a lot of people can afford the cash right now, and it's very market dependent. Market oh, goes up, okay. you can you can sell more. So, like, did you arrive at this conclusion by yourself talking to people, or you're like you 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 are I, analytical I w- by yourself, like ruling options out for you, and insurance was clearly more of the. I would say that one. I would not say that I didn't I didn't thought insurance was the key thing, mm. but it was one of my main concern. Like, I 
I feel that right uh, at a point of time uh, when I was choosing the careers, I didn't ask. I didn't. I did ask around, but I didn't ask much because what I felt was that if I were to ask too much, they will want to bring me into the career. Mm. So oh, it's yeah, yeah. it's very biased. Uh, a very biased advice. Mm. So I just ask as just as minimal. Uh, okay. I just ask a bit here and there mm. to get a bit of the feel of things. Mm. Do my own research, I, and I, I mean I'm a bit analytical in my way. Mm. So I went to understand and un- and and understand how like the how does it work, like like for insurance. Um, there's certain there's a certain um, allowance that are able to give you mm. at the start mm. for property. At the, at my time, there's no like your name cards, your flyers are all paid by you. There's Zero yeah. term, in terms of z- monetary support from the company is zero. Yeah. At my time, lah. Yeah. Or at least that's what I found. Mm. So, at that point, I realized that this is not really what I, I even if I were to transact a a a property, at the very first day of my career, right? I need to wait. Uh, which is the easiest would be probably a HDB flat. Mm. I need to wait four months for my ne- my first paycheck. Oh. Which I was thinking, mm, I'm an NS guy. I don't have much savings. Mm. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for the next four months, uh, even yeah. if I sell on the first day of my my job. Yeah. So, so I sort of shortlisted insurance. Mm. Then what happened was that um, a friend of mine uh, was a colleague. He actually got into a bike accident and he died. Mm. Okay, so, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, no, it's okay, it's okay. So this story I always tell everyone because, uh, I also want to let them know why I joined the career because it was because I went for the funeral. The mom, okay, single mom. Uh, single mom only child so they were like sort of like working together mm. to support each other mm. so uh, when the when the son died the mom was devastated like we went for the funeral and it was like just trying to chip in money for the the biting you know mm, yes I don't know what you call it in English but condolences money I yes, guess yeah, yeah. something along the lines mm. so we we just like wondering how she's going to pay for everything mm. then came an insurance agent mm. gave the mom a hundred thousand dollar check one hundred thousand, and the mom broke down and cried, and that was the time where I realized that, shit, like, I I really thought that it's, that that image will never leave me. Like yes, like yes. like I I will actually like feel like wow, it's yeah, something I that goes bounce over it, man. Like, yeah, like the kind of I, I I can tell that. you that I can tell you right, like, it sounds very cliche, very cheesy, typical I insurance. Love stuff, man. Yeah. Typical insurance drama kind of thing, but at that point in time, I tell you right, when you f- see it happening to your friends, unfortunately, my friend who has passed on and to the mother, right, you see and you realize that oh shit, that money meant so much to her. Mm. To us, to some people, hundred thousand may not be a lot. Yeah. To some, maybe a quite a fair bit, but to her, it meant the world to her. Yeah. And that point of time, I realized that. I mean. There's a lot of things we can sell, mm. be it property, be it car, be it anything. Mm. Even like we talk about MLM, we talk about health supplements, everything. But we cannot bring value to a person's life. Yeah, and that was something that I feel felt like, wow, that changed her life. Yeah. Immediately, that instant when she saw the check, she broke down and cried. And that instantly changed her life, mm. and that was something that I truly believe. Mm. I, and yeah, that then that was it at that moment that you. I was like, Shh, yeah, I, I needed. That, so this is that story, la. This is one of the very most powerful story of how you got started in the first place. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. and because of that, mm. made me want to join insurance. Mm. And the truth is, I, I, I mean, I don't know for some, mm. but at my at at the time at the point of time when I first joined the the career, a lot of times, uh, people are being tricked into joining the insurance. Oh, okay, like a okay. uh, oh come for uh, we call we call it blind interview. We say yeah. oh it's a marketing sales and marketing mm. kind of career mm. or or it's a a marketing position. Mm. But by the way, you also do insurance. Don't join insurance. So it's like a mm, okay, you know, like you get con. I have one of my <laughs> friends that that that, that, that join that way, right? Yes, they join that way. So, but I'm probably one of the few who came in and say, hey, I want to ins- I want to do insurance. I want to do this. This is what I want to do. I probably the one of the few lah. I, I, I feel like least. this is a very right reason lah. Yeah, you go yeah. into the industry like these are the okay. I will hate to say that it's a right or wrong reason. Sure, but this is a very genuine event that spurred you on into correct, being correct. very conscious of what career path you wanted to take. Yeah, I think that's very inspiring, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I hope to be lah, mm. because I feel that right right now it's it's more 
uh, it's more common mm. to, to go for insurance like to, to be recruited for insurance like join insurance because they want to join mm. but I feel that don't get caught by the money mm. like like if you ask me for advice for someone who's new mm. who wants to consider financial advisory as their career mm. don't join because of the money please mm. don't like if you are here to join because of money then please don't really don't but the money is good you see the thing is that we are being paid for the amount the big the, the we are being paid by the problems that we solve yes so the problems we solve are big That's yes. why being paid well. Yes. But don't get covered by the money. Mm. Because a lot of people I've seen hit million dollar round table, mm. drive fancy cars, you know, but wear expensive watches. Two years later, three years later, come off the industry with that. Mm. Because they they've spent so much time branding themselves mm. and then realizing that they're not really branding themselves. They're just mm. flashy. Mm. And I can be very honest with you that I was one I was once like that. Mm. I was I had a $18,000 watch. Mm. I was driving a Beamer. Mm. And you know, it reached to a point where my li- I couldn't support my own lifestyle because yeah. of how flashy I wanted to be. Mm. And I came out of it. Mm. Thankfully, uh thankfully I came out of it and I got out of it pretty pretty fast. Uh as much as as fast as I could lah. Mm. But it it took me a while to realize that. Mm. And I got a friend of mine <clears throat> Uh, who also went through that? Mm. Like we we just got lost. Like we got money but don't know what to do, mm. because at a very young age when you have, uh, I think I, I think if you've seen my other podcast that I did with my friend, mm. it it's really true that it's easy to get success, but it's very hard for us to manage success at a very young age. Yeah, and that's something that I failed, and I'm very honest about it. I failed, mm. but I managed to recover from it, mm. or at least I'm recovering from it. But the truth is that. That's something that I don't want people to join the career because of that. Mm. Like it's okay to be. I'm not saying it's wrong to be money driven, mm. but don't be the cause of not because of money. Then you're here in this for life. Like like, I mean, ultimately survivability is key. We need to work. We need the money to survive. Yes. But don't let it be the true one key driving force in everything you do in terms of in this career, mm. because after a while your clients will be treated like cash counts. Mm. They're just someone that gives you money. Mm. You don't have the real exchange of genuine relationship correct. building and really caring about them as people. Yeah. So that is what I always strive to tell people that if you must come in with the the heart to really help people, mm. the heart to really bring real value to people, mm. and money will just come your way. Mm. So I always have this rule that I always tell every client that I meet. Like like I'm not afraid to say this. I always tell my clients. There's always. I will put my client's interest first, followed by the company, then myself. Mm. So wow. I'll put what's your interest first. Mm. I see what can I give you, mm. followed by I see what my company can provide for you in terms of their products. Mm. Then I'll get paid last, mm. because if I always put your interest first, mm. eventually I'll get paid. Mm. It's just a matter of when, mm. be it through referrals, mm. be it through recommendations, mm. or being through doing business with me. Mm. So I like to think it the long game. I like to think long term. Mm. I like to play the long game in that sense. Rather than just try and sell something, be very very transactional. Mm. I transact with you, then that's it. Then we'll never have that real bond. Mm. Then eventually you just not have the loyalty with me mm. and just move on to somewhere else. Mm. And that's not what I want. Mm. I I want to take a step back, right? Yeah. Why prudential? Actually, actually, to be honest with you, company wasn't important. Okay. I feel that uh, at a point of time, the person that was around me mm. just happened to work for prudential, so oh, okay. I just happened to choose prudential. Okay. Just by coincidence, or in the sense, oh. uh, I didn't really shop around in the sense, uh. mm. If you to put it in in another in another way, like, what well, did I went to every single company and mm. ask what you all do, what's the mm. culture like, mm. what's the values you hold, and everything? Mm. No, I didn't because I I to me was that I want to do insurance because I want to do that. Mm. Full stop. Then that was what I wanted, mm. and the person that was next to me at that point that was my ex girlfriend. Mm. I wasn't uh, wasn't in Prudential, so I was like, oh, just nice. So I'll just join Prudential. Mm. Full stop. Nothing. Not nothing magic about it. I mean, okay. Sorry to <laughs> try again, right? Yeah. For me, right, I don't really understand the difference between, let's say, if if it's an insurance, a financial advisor from Great Eastern, financial mm. advisor from Prudential, financial advisors for all these kind of different companies, right? Sure. Is there really a very big difference on the kind of policies on a macro level? I'm I'm sure you are very familiar with it. On the different policies that they have mm. for. Different problems that you face, the clients. Might okay, face. I would say that uh, the beauty of us mm. in Singapore, it's it's very competitive. Mm. Uh, I always like to use this example to share with my clients and people that I meet. Okay, what's the, what's the difference between buying from Prudential? Don't, don't not just me. We just talk about company itself. Okay, 
AIA, Prudential, GE, all the other companies, Aviva, yeah. all the other companies. Mm. I always use this example. Mm. Do you know of brown sugar bubble tea? Yeah. Are you a fan of brown sugar bubble tea? Uh, I'm a fan of bubble tea in general. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's just say bubble, uh, milk tea. Mm. Yeah. Is there any difference between all the different brands? Slightly. Yeah. yeah. Is it is it life changing? Not that much. Not, not a big difference. La. Not a big difference. But you see the key things are it's still milk tea, sugar syrup, pearls. bubble pearls. Yeah. Right? Mm. It's the same thing. Okay. There's no difference. It's just which one you prefer. Oh. Of course, because again, we are cause we are so competitive, if a company comes up with a like a unique product, mm. usually three to six months later, uh, someone will, co- co- will copy it, improve it, and come on their own. The thing is that I feel that right focus on the value that the person you're working with is able to give mm. rather than the company so of course if you have specific needs mm. specific uh, coverage mm. or specific ones that you're looking for mm. certain companies can able to provide yes just like how bubble tea is there's certain drinks like example there's this company called Wubi yes that does pea pakao milk tea and Ew. no but okay I, tr- I, I like pea pakao I tried it okay I, I, I felt mm, <laughs> It didn't sit right, okay, but okay. I got friends that I know of that love that. Yes, yes. So it's a very niche, very specific thing that nobody else has. Yeah. So if you're looking for something very specific, then company makes sense. Yes. But if you're looking for something very generic, like a whole life plan, mm. like for a savings plan, it's mm. very similar. Mm. Of course, there are some terms and conditions you think no, but you must understand that the 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 competitiveness in Singapore is like, you have A B C, I have B C D. Mm. So it's one have A, one have D. Mm. But if you look at it at, at a macro level, it's not really that much of a difference. Mm. So ultimately, it points now to what really, what do you really want? Mm. I give an example. I compared recently a product with company. I don't say the company, but my company and someone. So I told the I told the client, if you're looking for more coverage, I win. If you're looking for more cash value, they win. Mm. So which what one do you, you prefer? Want. Yeah. Then the person say, I want more cash value. Oh, um, I want more cash value. Okay, look. Then you go for that company uh. because I cannot solve. Because you reach to a point in time where we cannot win means we cannot win. Yeah. But I rather give you genuine and real authentic advice. Mm. Say they are they are better. But yeah. I'm tell you why I win. Mm. I'm cheaper. Mm. I give you more coverage. Mm. But she don't mind paying more for the extra cash value that they get at the end of the day. Yeah, it's what she prioritizes. <coughs> so instead of trying to hard sell the person, mm. I, I I this is why I believe. Uh, if we really cannot win, then so be it. Mm. But we win in terms of the trust. Mm. I know one day, I, and I hope one day, if she were to meet someone, uh, me, she were to buy another product, she'll probably come back to me and say, hey, Leslie, mm. in time we did a comparison, is Prudential able to give me something better? Mm. That's what I'm hoping for. Mm. I feel like what you're telling me, right, I mean, it strongly resonates me. I, it strongly yeah. resonates in the sense whereby I feel that you are very passionate and genuine about the products that you sell. Yeah. Just that, at least for my experience, right, I haven't. I felt that I personally haven't met people like you that are that genuine. But were you always like that as a financial advisor? To be I honest, would, or if okay. you're willing to share, because I, I think I, this kind of mindset I, and this kind of um, um, intention to really, really help, right, is really bigger than yourself, and it's yeah. quite difficult. At, at least, for my opinion, I'm not a financial advisor. So like, it's incentivizing, like in the sense whereby the commissions are just there for you, and you really like want to push but you have to take that leap of faith mm. to other the, depends on what your client wants like, your correct, correct, like correct. okay I'll push my client for another product at another day but w- did you always have w- or would you always say that you had this intention as a financial advisor I would say at the start no you understand no no but I would not say that I was complete not not completely no but there was a certain aspect that was still there yeah like I would still I would like I would still push the agenda more mm. Like uh, at the start, because you see, uh, I think you must un- we must understand the I, I don't know the word psychographics of a person when yeah. you are you are new in the business. Yes, you yes, need to I build know. your you need to be, you need to survive. Yes, you need to have the business. Yes, which I don't uh, I which I understand. Uh. but at least I for my at least for me because you're lao jiao. <laughs> yeah, at least for me, I will feel that right. Okay, like I use the same scenario. The, the the young me, the one that I was in, maybe the first year of my career, yeah, I will sure. probably tell the person, say that, look, the company is not as good, mm. you know, because they are giving you higher cash value. But you look at us, 
we are giving you more protection. The whole purpose of binding is for protection, right? Mm. Why don't you buy more for protection? Yeah. So I so try streaming information. In that way, yeah, it's like I try to <laughs> unsell the company and tell you why you should buy this. I keep, yes. or rather, I will force my idea of why you should buy this yeah. onto you. Yes. But Instead of listening to what I want. I, no, I'll still listen to what I want, but I will like uh, agree to disagree and uh, try uh, and push it the other way. I see, I see. Which is no wrong in a sense, but you have to agree like what you really want to see. Yes. So I try and influence to I, I'm trying to influence you to change mm. the way you think. Yes. Is it manipulative? Mm. It's not exactly true. Yes. It's not really exactly manipulative, but because ultimately the key thing is you still you still have the final say. I'll yes. not force you to sign anything. Yes. So that was what I do. I believe I, I did. Mm. Because I need to be a harder pusher for for as a as a new advisor, I need to survive. Yes, yes. It's just human nature. Mm. But I don't miss sell. Mm. That's the thing that I, I never crossed. Mm. Like uh, even I, I, I talk about, you know, when I got fancy, my lifestyle couldn't, su- uh, my income couldn't sustain my lifestyle. I also didn't miss sell. Mm. Because I told myself that I would never one day want someone to call me and say, hey Leslie, can I claim for this? Mm. And I tell them, cannot. Then the person say, but you told me can. Mm. That, that's the phone call that I never ever want in my life. Yes. And the phone call is I want to tell my clients, yeah, you can claim. Yeah. That's the call I want to because again, the why I joined the career in the first place. Mm. I want to be able to, to be the person to give. Yes, it's a very sad story. Mm. It, it's it's not something that I also, also like I'm dying to do mm. because someone has to pass on for me to be that hero. Yes. But that's not what I want. But mm. the truth, if 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 it's possible, I would want to be that person. Mm. And that's something that I, I really hold dear to me to my heart that I really want to give that value to the person. And mm. that's why there's, there are times where it's very easy for me to miss out. Yes. Very easy for me to just, uh, in, in our line of work, there's always this thing, you can, if you cannot convince, you're confused or you're con. Yeah. I can agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not uh, I, may get, I may get flagged up for this, I get, may get scrutinized for it, but uh, like just what Gary V says, uh, if you want to hit, hit on, because, but I'm trying, I'm doing, yes. how about you? Yes. I'm being honest and I'm being genuine about it that it's either they com- they confuse mm. you know they convince they try to convince mm. if you cannot convince you're confused mm. you're not confused then you con. con so okay. yeah so that's the worst but that is why a lot of people get so much back stigma of insurance because a lot of people reach the last stage for me I, I stopped at the first stage okay. uh, confused wise I try not to because ultimately again I don't have the phone call and people call you as like let's let's just say you call me. Hey Leslie, why what, what did I buy? Uh? Why is this? Uh? I why I didn't know why I buy this. Then like I don't have that phone call. Like, it's very scary. Like, like you wake up in the middle of the night or in the daytime when we maybe have a very great day, you know, having a family day, then someone calls you and mm. and because of what you did in the past haunts you back, then you just like it's like a ticking time bomb. Like. Yeah. Like insurance policies are so long term. Yes. yes, they are short-term plans. Very long-term. Yeah, and or generally, they are average of 10 to 15 to 20 years. Yeah. It means it's a ticking time bomb for the next 10 years if I missell you. Mm. Why I want to do that? Mm. I'm just creating trouble for myself in the future. Mm. That's not how you do business, right? Mm. So I, that's what I believe and that's what I do. So I've, I try to convince a lot in the beginning of my career. Mm. Like right now, is I don't convince you. I just tell you the facts and figures you decide yourself. Yeah. Because at least for me, it's because my business is matured in the sense whereby I don't exactly need a lot of new business to support to, to sustain my current income. Yes. But that's where I can really give uh, real value. Mm. But <clears throat> at the start, you can still do that. Mm. Just that you have to be more so called unquote pushy in terms of the convincing part. Lah. But it's just human nature to do that. And I don't blame young people to do that, yes. young, young advisors to do that, in fact. But just know where, you, where your line, where, where the line is. Mm. You don't confuse. Mm. And the last thing you shouldn't be conning mm. because it will bite you back in the ass. In terms of like, the, okay, one thing I want to ask you about sure, sure. going over the place. I want, like, let's say you are talking to a young financial advisor who has just started in their career, right? Yeah. Um, or A, can you first tell me like, what was the general progression rule of a financial advisor? Because General yeah, progression in the sense what, like, like career-wise? Yeah, career-wise. Is there like a ascending? Like, because I know only some of my friends that they are financial cons- advisors for a mm. while, then they become like managers, where, but they teach other mm. financial advisors, then like they go up the rank. I'm not exactly clear on the kind of career path of a financial advisor. Sure. Like, or is it you are always like just selling plans? Okay, so it's everything. like, uh, 
So there's always two path, the professional path and the managerial path. Mm. So the professional path would be you grow up in terms of like uh, man- a consultant, senior consultant, mm. uh, executive consultant, then a master consultant. So there are different tiers. Like different company has different way of naming their 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 consultants, how they rank them. Yes. Like for my for Prudential, it's a um, uh, consultant, senior, uh, executive, then master. Mm. Then for terms of a uh, manager, there's always like a junior manager, manager, senior manager, then director. Okay. So it depends on which path you wanna go. Of course, whichever path you are, you are still able to do the sale. Mm. So it doesn't mean that I'm a manager, I don't sell. But there are some managers which I respect, they don't sell anymore mm. because they dedicate their whole time just focusing on coaching their people. Okay. Yeah, because if uh, because of underwrite uh, overriding means I earn my own commission means I overwrite my own commission. So if I sell, mm. I also earn a additional commission on my own. Yes. So there are some directors that I know they sell. Because I service my existing customer. Mm. So it's fine, it's okay. Mm. And there are some who do very well. I, I'm no quant of it. And I also know of some who purely don't want to do sales. Mm. Reason being because they just want to dedicate their whole time coaching people. Oh, so okay. I respect them for that. Mm. Because uh, it's not easy to do that. You really f- just put your heart and soul to just coach people. Mm. So that's something that I respect for. In terms of coaching, like then, I mean, do they have a, like a fixed payroll? Or no. They, so no, is it? It's then? very dependent on the results of their people. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so they are putting their faith hundred percent on the people. Oh, I think it's like a different kind of skill set, right? Like in terms yeah, of training people yeah, yeah. how to close and doing the closing themselves. Correct, correct, correct. Which which do you prefer? I would like to do both. Reason being very simple is uh, because I this this is what I believe. I mean, everybody have their way of doing things. I there's no right, there's no wrong way. Yes. I mean, it's just what you, what make what works for you. Mm. For me, is I still do my own sales because number one, I have my existing clients to service. Yes. Number two, uh, in terms of me keeping my hand in the pulse yes. to understand how things work, mm. how the yeah, business. Yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah like I'm still learning. Like I'm still trying things. Mm. So, every, whatever method that I'm proposing, whatever way I'm I'm. I'm trying out loud whether any way any any way of scripts or any way of presentation that I'm doing, mm. it's something that I tried before and I know where the pitfalls mm. and I know what works or don't work. Mm. So when my people try, they you also share with them. they share with them that this is tested and proven mm. or this has been tested. Mm. So you try your way, you mm. try your target audience mm. and see what is the results. Then we can work together. Mm. So I always believe in that way that we keep working on it. Mm. And rather that I'm sitting in an ivory tower and tell you this works, this works, this works, but mm. it could be five years ago, ten years ago, yeah. and it's not as relevant as it is today. Mm. Like ten years ago, nobody thought about social media branding. Yeah. Now it's like everything's rampant. Everyone's yes. trying to brand themselves on social media. But okay. again, it's another. It's something else we need to talk. We can talk yeah, about. Yeah, but I'm definitely, I'm very interested in that. But not not at this point of time. Not that it's right now. Okay. But basically, it's understanding how it works. Mm. Then. You know, it's easier for you to like. I give you advice. I give you methods. I give you skill sets that it's relevant. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to do. Mm. That to keep myself in uh, moving as well. What's the ratio of let's say? Uh, okay, I, I'm I'm using the terms loosely like a sure. manager, you coaching like new financial advisors. Is there a ratio like is like is there a fixed number of new people that you have to coach, or is something that you voluntarily take on? Uh, like so long if like? okay, so so long someone comes on board, then we have to f- uh, fulfill like the first thirteen weeks to spend time with them, to oh, teach and coach so them. It's so allocated and okay, that it's uh industry standard. That okay. is what you need to do. Okay, but out of your own uh, free will, you, you can decide how you want to do it. Mm. So it could be as uh as frequent as every day, mm. as frequent as twice a week. Yeah. It really up boils down to how you want to do it. Mm. But the minimum is uh once a week for thirteen weeks, because okay. that's the industry standard. Yeah, that you have to fulfill the trainings and everything. So there are certain industries because uh, the thing is that our industry is heavily regulated. Yes. So there's a lot of things uh, by right, by default we have to do already. Yeah. It's just whether you want to take the further step and teach them more. So mm. for me, it's I always meet my people on Mondays. Mm. We have a, a group discussion to talk about what we went through, what are the cases we have, what are the appointments, what went well, what went wrong. Yeah. And for me, we just learn from each other because I think group learning is a lot faster. Huh. Yeah. And. I feel that like uh, it's very important for me as a manager to really bring myself down and to let them know that you know I also go through shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not almighty, mm. and these are shit I go through, mm. and this is how I handle it. Mm. So that if I can handle it, you should be able to handle it as well. Mm. Or if you don't, we do it together. Mm. 
So I think that's very, very important. That what are the common it. kind of, you say, pitfalls that young financial advisors uh, make? I would say that I think they very, get very caught up by the rejection. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I think the toughest thing as a financial consultant that they will face is actually a rejection. Mm. But I think it's key. Mm. It really make you a better person. Yeah. Like, I know there's so many like motivational <laughs> quotes like, uh, the no means next uh, next opportunity. Yeah, yeah. But it's you know. when you feel it yourself, la. I mean, you're human. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're human, lah. I mean, like no matter how much motivation you you can get, mm. uh, the true motivation must come from within. Yes, that's what I'm. Th- I truly believe, mm. and just need to keep doing shit, mm. Like like it's very Gary V, but it's really true. That just keep doing because. Mm. Uh, rejection it's something that we have to embrace mm. the truth is we, we embrace rejection uh, on a daily basis to be honest yes it's just a matter of how big a scale it is okay like you're not getting your uh, you're not getting your grab car or mm. your grab share or what it's a rejection in a way right? it's just yeah. how you see it mm. I'm not getting my foot on time it's also a form of quote unquote rejection yes yes but it's just that we got it in such a very big scale uh, uh in such big volume at a very short amount of time, it's very taxing on the person. Yeah. Which I agree that it's not easy. But that built tenacity, that built character, mm. and that make you a stronger person. Mm. And I truly believe that if you can slog, you can you can survive that, you can do a lot of things. Mm. There's I always there's this saying that I, I and I think it's very true. If you can do well in insur you can do well in insurance, you can do well in anything. Wow. You know why? Why? Because I'm selling you something that you cannot feel, cannot see, cannot touch. Yes. So if I can sell you, you cannot feel, cannot see, cannot touch. Mm. Then I can sell you anything. Mm. It's true. That's interesting. I mean, let's look at it that way. Okay. I'm selling you a promise of paying you something. I pay, pay, I'm selling you a promise mm. of paying you out something if something bad happens to you. Yes. Can you feel it? No. no. Can you touch it? No. It's something that you visualize and it's up it, to your words, your marketing collaterals, your yeah, of branding course the, Of course, the, it's a contract and everything. You can yeah. feel the contract, la, but the actual product, you can't really like sort of feel it yeah. until something bad happens to you. Mm. So there's this saying that if I can do, okay, I can sell insurance, mm. I can sell anything, which is true right? because when you say orange juice, I can yeah. see, I can tell you, I can let you feel it, yeah. I can let you, oh, then you're buying a physical product. Yes, It's a lot easier to sell. Mm. So that's why I feel. So a lot of people that come in this career, I say that I, I, uh, and I've got people who join and left as an internship. Mm. And I told them that the whole idea of me joining, trying to join, uh, joining me, right, is to really let you learn the skill sets you need. Mm. Because these are skill sets that you will go through, will, like, it's like riding a bicycle. Mm. You, you follow it for life. Yes. Because everybody thinks that selling is difficult or selling, I don't do sell. I don't want to sell. I hate selling. Mm. I hate doing sales. Mm. But the very fact that your job, in any job you do, you're doing sales. It's just mm. that you don't know. Whether you know or don't know. Whether you're conscious of it or not. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's just say you're doing your podcast. You're mm. selling yourself. Yes, yes. Yeah, you are doing content buying. You're also selling yourself. You're selling how good your skills are. Mm. You When you go for interviews, you're selling yourself. Mm. When you are doing a proposal, you're selling yourself, you're selling your idea, you're selling your hard work. Mm. When you want for running for promotion, you're selling how good you are as a person, mm. how valuable you are. Mm. You're always selling. Mm. And I feel that it's just whether you <clears throat> know how to manage it mm. and how you learn from it. And I feel that these are skill sets that uh, the insurance industry can teach you very fast. Mm. But it's something that mm, you have to take it with a pinch of salt. Like it's really not easy. There's no thing, there's no such thing as fast track. To, to success mm. you really have to come in the, I mean again there are success stories that come in three months six months they do very well mm. uh, they do like they can be earning like twice as much as their peers or twice mm. as much as where they were yeah. in a short amount of span of time but yeah. you don't know how much time and effort and energy they have put in the last the, the three to six months to mm. work that hard to get that quick success mm. so don't, don't get so caught up with the I'm here to earn Again, like I said, don't get caught by the money. You know, you must understand that it's definitely going to be hustling and grinding for the first at least two years. Mm. With that in mind, when you join already, if it's shorter for you, I'm happy. You know, if it's longer for you, then maybe it's time to reflect whether it's something that you really want to do. Mm. Because that is something that you have to reflect. Like, like if I'm working so hard, I'm not getting paid where I, let's just say I'm a degree holder, for example. Mm. My income is 3000 mm. 
and I will slog my I work 8 hours I work 10 hours every single day mm. for 2 years but my income is not near there mm. then it's time for you to reflect and see is this suitable for you mm. how long does it take for let's say I'm sure in your experience you have seen people come and go correct what is that sweet spot duration to know whether this is something for me or not 2 years 2 years two my years. gosh 2 years is very long no it's no, not long it's not long so not long why long so like after two years, what like KPI would you say that s- would tell the financial advisor that this is probably not something for me? Like the amount of f- amount of work you put in mm. and the amount of income you're getting, mm. oh, you so measure by that. Is that that proportional? Is it? Yeah, oh. because uh, I think it's very important. Like mm. again, survivability is key. Why I keep repeating this is because as much as we don't want to focus on money, we are st- we still need to survive. Yes. So the key KPI would be the amount of hours you put at work mm. and the amount of money you're earning. Mm. The, the truth is that, right, the real real hours of working is not a lot for us. Mm. The money we get, if you compare, right, our per dollar, no, our per hour cost, uh, but our rate is quite high one. Mm, yeah. So if you are not earning, because why I say that is very simple, because when you go in at a two-year mark, when you go and measure it, then you say I'm not working I'm not getting enough I'm not earning enough I'm not doing well enough mm. then the question to you is are you really spending enough hours working mm. or actually working oh okay you get my point yeah because I can be doing administrative work mm. I can be doing uh, networking sessions with people to build networks yeah but that's not work that's just you doing things you like to do yeah you're not really actually working. Mm. So when you count out the actual number of hours you're actually working mm. versus the amount you pay you get, mm. you can count, you go and count per mm. hour, your uh, hourly rate mm. times uh, maybe an eight <coughs> seven hours, uh, seven hours of working times five times 20, mm. then that's your monthly pay. Mm. So you think by me doing what I'm doing right now and me comparing me going back to where I was, can I get paid more am I being paid more or being paid less mm. you're being paid less then you ask yourself is this job still worth staying on yeah. in terms of the value I'm bringing to people mm. uh, or not mm. because you still believe in the career believe in that mm. then you should go on further mm. because everything everyone takes time mm. Every there's a season for everything Yeah, maybe your season is not there yet mm. but you have to believe in the work you do mm. and the two year mark if you still don't believe in the work you do you do not get paid well enough mm. Or rather, pay you what you deserve. Mm. Then it's something for you to reconsider. Mm. If not, then just see how it goes, lah. I mean, okay. <clears throat> it's not a hard and fast rule, mm. but that's my own personal rule. Like anybody who joins me, I tell them the same thing. Like, like just do that. You want to join me for whatever reasons. You, hey, I want to join insurance. Yeah. After hear my story, yeah. and I'll just say, if I will, I will put myself also a two year mark. Mm. If that two years, I'm not able to bring you to where you are right now, mm. currently what you're doing is, yes, then I also ask you to leave. Oh. Those also don't waste your time, eh? mm. but I believe that two years, the amount of skill set you learn mm. is enough to bring you further in whatever you go, where you do. do. That's what I truly, be, I truly hope to bring, mm. What percentage of people that go goes come and goes from your eyes, right? Mm. Are suited to be financial advisors? I would say. Yeah, what's the percent? Yeah, what's the uh, percentage Okay, the percentage is very is very tricky to give you because mm. I feel that ultimately it's the mindset. Okay. Uh, it's ultimately the mindset of the person. If you cannot change your mindset, right, mm. then you cannot do a lot of things. Mm. I think it's a, a business of you need to constantly change, mm. adapt, mm. and and react accordingly. Like it's a very thing on your feet kind of thing. Mm. Like you cannot just preempt certain things. Right? Like mm. I go for a, a, every appointment I go can go anywhere. Right? Like it could be. There are appointments when I go, right, I just thought sign a form. Like maybe change of a credit card or change your particulars. I go there and then next minute I have a two-hour session with her yeah. about why she wants to buy. Because suddenly she says that you want to buy for, I want to plan for my retirement. Uh, out of the blue. Yeah. So you always must think on the feed. It's always ever-changing. Spontaneous. So you, very spontaneous. You need to really, like just like how we're doing the podcast now. We don't yeah. know where it would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know, but yeah. like at least you know. Like for me, I I, I have certain things I want to say. Mm. There's certain things we want to ask. We have some agenda per yes, se, yes. but we don't know where you go. Yeah. So that is why uh, it's that's just. Why I like it la. I don't know. I yeah, think that's it, what it's also why that spontaneity that is uh, livening. Like, yeah, sense. that's what I like about it. Also, like the conversation can go anywhere, mm. 
and, and that's the truth uh, about the career and I cannot tell you the percentage because it's really boils down to the people that we meet okay, like I see, I see. It, it's very hard for me I don't have enough sample size mm. to tell you oh, 20% 30% or 40% but mm. the key thing is if you have a very fixed mindset mm. then you will not succeed in the career okay so this is a key thing that the key potential thing is, financial advisor should look out for yeah. be open, open-minded to change growth mindset growth mindset you have to come in with a growth mindset that I want to anything can happen mm. and I need to relearn everything I know okay on that note right yeah. 101 for new financial advisors when it comes to marketing themselves or what are the first steps that a new financial advisor could do to be better in a sense I would think that right uh, the key thing right now right, is really brand yourself online brand yourself online okay. yeah like brand yourself as an individual mm. and not because I'm Leslie the consultant Leslie the prudential guy Leslie the insurance guy but mm. Leslie in general mm. because people buy people mm. people buy I think it's something that if you if like people who like listen to you probably will consume Gary V's content as well yeah. And you you understand why he do branding. Yeah. And the brand equity that we brand is very important. Mm. Like I'm known as a food guy. Mm. So you people the what? Food food. Food. Yeah, you follow me on my Instagram, oh, you just see makan. it's all about food. Oh, like okay, like okay. I'm I'm very into food. I got clients who are overseas who call me or WhatsApp me say, Hey Leslie, I'm in Tokyo right now, I'm at this location. Is there anything oh. you can recommend me to eat? Wow, that's nice. So I I've, I, I I like to think that I reached that level of oh. foodie mm. level. And I really enjoy food. I le- enjoy cook. I enjoy cooking. Mm. And fun fact, I just did. Uh, I was, there was this viral article that went online mm. that says about Japanese using KFC, and they make chicken rice in a rice cooker. Yeah. So I did that, and it went viral on Facebook, like fourteen thousand shares. Wow. Yeah, I was like very surprised, oh. and yeah. So mm. that's something that I I really like enjoying doing that, but they. Ultimately, it's again, it's like giving value. Like I just want to share. Like mm. I enjoy sharing mm. good food, where the place to go. So, I think uh, one of my friend told me that it's mm. something that is really mm. inbred in me in the sense whereby it's something that I, I'm always a very sharing person. Mm. So that really prompted me to do this, like the all the videos and everything. But my advice for new advice, my advice for new advisors is, you really need to build a brand of yourself because. A lot of times when we meet someone new, mm. uh, especially a new advisor, right? It's very salesy. Mm. Like you know, because it's a business tra- meeting, it's a business transaction. Mm. So you know, it's going to be very salesy already. Mm. Agree. So we we'll only have that much time to build that impression mm. on what kind of person I am. Mm. And the truth is that a lot of times we will Google, we will Instagram, Facebook, stalk the person or search the person before we meet. Mm. So roughly, we have a. Uh, 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 we'll build a, pers- a rather a online persona of the person before we marry. Mm. Like just like before we met, mm. you also will know how what kind of person I am. Yes. So I think that it's something that all new advisors should really try and build that thing the way whereby you brand yourself enough mm. to know to let people know what kind of person you are. So by the time when I meet you, it's easily relatable. Mm. No, you talk you talk about branding yourself, right? Yeah. Branding is a very big term. Yeah. For someone, we are literally for new financial advisor. What like small baby steps would you recommend? The first ten steps okay. that one financial advisor should do. No, actually, I'll give you one word. One word. What's the one word? Relatable. Relatable. Just make yourself relatable. Correct. Mm. The word is relatable. The key word is relatable. Mm. Uh, be it whether is it like handling objections, be, be it is it um, pitching, mm. doing a sales sales pitch, a presentation. Mm. In anything you in in every aspect, right? just be relatable. Mm. Any uh, tactical advice? Tactical advice. Tactical of macro advice. I know. Ma- macro yeah. advice, ah. Uh, no, wow. no, tac- uh, tactical, tactical. Tactical. Okay, it's not. I don't want to share, mm. and I would love to share. It's mm. just that you need to give me a specific problem that I can solve. Mm. Uh, because generally, okay, I can give you a general advice. Like the tactical advice is if you like to serve, uh, young working adults, example, fresh grads. Talk their language. Mm. If you then be in groups that, that always do that, mm. brand yourself as a power, a person of authority in that sense. Mm. You know, speak their language. Mm. If you are targeting young young parents, mm. you know, join join Facebook group, mm. join the Facebook yeah. group, or join topics or join uh, events that have them. Mm. Be a person of authority. Be relatable. Like understand 
what they go through, understand what's their pain points, mm. and address them for the address. So be very them. specific in the kind of people that you want to approach in general. Correct. Okay. Again, like if you've seen my videos and what I do, right? Like I did the the one you talk about the four th- uh, insurance you should buy for a newborn. Yeah. It's really parents, rela- parents a young parents. It's yeah. relatable because as a new parent, you'll be so bogged down by. Uh, what 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 na- what diapers I need to buy? What milk pow- form to, What formula milk should I use? Should I still continue breastfeed? How long should I breastfeed for? Yeah. What kind of car seat I need to buy? Yeah. What kind? Of, they're so they are making so many decisions at that point of time. Mm. They also don't know what they want. Mm. Like it's very difficult. I mean, and I understand. I've got clients who went through that, and they are telling me that, wow, this car seat is ninety dollars. This car is eighty dollars. But this one got this, that got that. They cannot make decisions that way. Yeah. And it's very tough for them. Yeah. But. When it comes to insurance, it's like I I no need to buy, and but I got no time. I got no this. I got no that. I got everything. But I do that video, so I really tell you these yeah, are four things you need to buy. Full stop. Don't even think about anything else. Yeah, you know, and I tell you why you need to buy, mm. so you have a clarity of why you need to buy certain things. Mm. Like everyone knows it's important to buy, but they don't know why they need to buy it for, mm. especially for new kid, young kids. Mm. So when I share with you that your pain points, it's easily for you to relate to that. That like, oh. I am a new. I'm a, a new parent. Mm. I'm a young parent. I have a young and a newborn. Mm. These are things that I can consider. Mm. Okay, at least you make my decision making a lot faster. Mm. Then people will listen to you more. Mm. So I feel that that is something that you need to keep understanding that you need to be relatable. Mm. Uh, and again, uh, again, I talk about what it's convenience, which is the keyword. I to me that's my word for the year. Convenience, which is how easily am I reachable. So if you're in the kind of groups, you're in, th- in, you're speaking their language. Number one, I can relate to you. Mm. Number two, I, easy for me to reach you. Then, mm. then that's where you win with really. you. So in terms of let's say, parents are clearly one of your demographics, right? Like yeah. what other macro, macro in terms of let's say content production, right? What kind yeah. of um, people are you trying to appeal to or be or relate to? Like for me, I my videos are more general. Mm. Uh, if you ask me to, I don't want to. I I think I'm not reached to that level where I can streamline to to a specific target audience right now. Okay. But I would like to do general content right now first mm. to really educate everyone that I meet because right now I don't have. I don't think I'm at that level of uh authority to say that hey look if you want. If you are, if you are, if you're a young parent, you should listen to me. I yeah. have not reached that level yet. Okay. I think we are. I'm still trying to create a top of the mind funnel first. Yes. Then eventually, then I maybe narrow down to which demographics I like to serve more. Mm. But as a start, I like to serve everyone, mm. because my clients also come from everywhere. Yes. They be young. I have clients who are 25. I have clients who are 60. I have mm. clients who are in between. It's about balancing, huh? really Yeah, it's about balancing. Yeah, yeah. So to me, is I, I, I view create content creation at this point of time for me mm. is to bring value to my friends, my clients, and people who want to know more. Mm. Like, do I if I get business of it, great. But that's not my KPI. My KPI is people really look, watch my videos and people consume it. Mm. I think that if when I have a strong following in terms of my my content, mm. then it's easier for me to really uh, Garner, garner other things from there. Like mm. when I need support for certain things, when there's a new product that's being launched, they're more willing to listen to me. Mm. They're more willing to work with me mm. or I become more referable mm. because that is the way to build business. It's really not to keep look sourcing for new, sourcing for business. Like paying, I, like, I know like Facebook ads are very underpriced right now. Mm. But the truth is that you, if it's very transactional, right, eventually you will be burned out. Why I keep having the transaction? I rather build relationships, sh- relationships that are true, mm. genuine. Mm. Like my goal is to build one hundred clients that truly believe in what I do, mm. truly believe in share the same values as me, mm. and I can keep constantly build and give them uh value, mm. like in terms of my content, my advice, mm. and be it life hacks, mm. like uh be it like uh like recently I think there was this. Uh, Easling card was giving out free five dollar vo- five dollar digit five dollars for if you sign up their digital wallet. So I sent to all my clients. Oh yeah. So it's like free money from from like from like Easling. Then why not just share with my clients? Yeah. Like I don't share on on my social media mm. because I want to give a heads up to my my the people that that trust me, yeah. that has trusted me and given me their time mm. and recommended me people. Like I think that's something that I have to give it back to them. Mm. 
So that is what I I I, I think so lah. Mm. Okay, Leslie, thanks so much right for yeah. sharing all this because I'm caught. I'm like totally agreeing with what you say lah because yeah. I feel that your intentions in terms of being a financial advisor in that mm. realm right, it's it's I hate to say but it's for the right reasons and yeah. sometimes I feel that. Uh, in general, that's why financial advisors, right, in my opinion, doesn't really have a very good rep in general. Correct, but right, right. Thanks so much for sharing for this no because problem, I no know problem. that any financial advisors out there, whether it's your new one or there, I think that through this conversation, um, I think the intention needs to be very. Mm. You need to just trust the process of giving value. Like sure. Of course, I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. For listeners out there, if you don't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, right, go read his book, Thank You Economy, in a sense whereby really it's like what you say, just giving so much value and but yet have no yet have no expectations yeah. but you know that the market being the market the macro market will yeah. reward you in those ways correct, and I correct. think that's very meaningful to end off right can I just ask you some very short fire questions right? sure 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 what's the best advice have you ever received wow think about it <laughs> think about it uh. best advice I've ever received uh. best advice you have received in your years of being a financial consultant whether Must if it's it coaching people whether or is it best advice you have received as a like a personal capacity in your own mindset that but you want to share with others in general so, so in general in general uh, yeah the best advice I, I that you've ever received i really don't know like, like there's too many like to be honest why <laughs> okay yeah, top, top five let's go top five top okay, I best, top five, like, okay. Best. the best thing it's uh wow it's all very gary v shit <laughs> Okay, I must admit, uh, I'm a very big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah, I am so. also, I'm yeah. also. Like, okay, my top advice for any new advisors out there or anybody that I've, anybody's listening, that uh, you must have clarity of what you want to do. Okay. Uh, the truth, the, the thing, I think it's a very uh, clarity, which is a very cliche word of advice. Okay, if you know I your know how, about, yes. If you know your how, okay. you know your why. You know, so you know your why, then you know how to do it. Yes. Like, find out, your, find out the why. Mm. Then the how will come naturally. Like why I want to do this. Mm. Then how to do it will come naturally, which is really true. Like you really have to have clarity. But the word I think more importantly, it's clarity. Yes, clarity. That's very important. Mm. Then the second thing is st- uh, stop learning, start doing. Yes, I must take this advice as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like like again, I think somewhere halfway through the podcast, I said something along the lines of, uh, stop going for conferences, stop going for trainings. Stop paying for causes and stop paying for what? Uh, what? I, I don't know. Like, like okay, because financial consultants are rich, rich in the sense where you have a lot of money to spend. Yes, yes. And a lot of causes are all targeted at how to do Facebook marketing, yes, how to yes. get referrals, how yeah, to do this, yeah. how to do that. But how many of them who go execute. actually execute it? I can tell very little. Really? Be very little. Or maybe they'll execute it in the beginning, but they'll not follow through. Yeah. The thing is that right, a lot of time of a lot of us, right? Uh a lot of us, okay, I think this okay, maybe this is something else I also learned. Yes, yes. Like why our smartphones are smartphones? Because we take photos or information but we never use. Mm. So that's why our phones are smarter than us. Because they have all the information Ooh, that I have, okay. but we never use it. Yeah. So after a while, when you in, I mean, I'm in ten. I'm going to my ten year in my industry. Like yes. what kind of training, what everything I've gone before already. Yes. And I realized that after a while, right, you're just clocking in hours to make yourself feel good that I've grown, that I've learned, yes, that I'm better, yes. But the truth is no. I you're, didn't. You're not converting it into something tangible. Correct. Yes. And that really sparked me to really start doing videos. Like I learned my own video. I shoot my own video and. And I see your setup today. I'm like, oh shit! I know how difficult it is to edit all these things yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. And and I know I know it for a fact. And everyone keep asking me who I hire, who I got, uh, who I hire. I, I just wrote a, really. I just wrote a, I just did a post last night only. Yeah. People ask me who I hire, mm. who write my script. Yeah. Who I hire to edit, mm. and who do my thumbnails. I tell yeah. them everything I do myself. I just take my phone, put there. And talk. I just shoot. I talk and I shoot. Yes. A lot of NGs. My first video took me five hours yes. to shoot. Took me another f- 10, 20 hours to edit. Yeah. Yes. But now it I always get, starts from there. Yeah, yes. the first step. So yeah. the second advice I'll give is stop learning, start doing. That's nice. Okay, the learning part, don't take it as literally don't learn. Yes. Like when you know your clarity, because once you have the clarity, right, mm. you know what you need to learn. Yes. Then stop learning other nonsense mm. and start executing. Mm. Then one, then after you you test and test and do it. Mm. I, te- I mean, t- trial and error along the way. Mm. The key thing is really need to learn first. Mm. What's the worst advice have you ever received? Worst advice. Uh? My worst advice would be. 
not not your not your worst eh? the worst advice you ever yeah yeah, yeah the worst advice that I've I've gotten uh, I would say it would be don't worry you can earn it back don't worry. oh okay I get it I get it that's yeah. interesting one year from now you're obviously a damn loud in your industry right but yeah. one year from now uh what things will need to happen to you to make it the best year for your ten year run in the financial space financial really, advising space I mean I have a personal goal that I want to hit which is to 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 really set myself up to do a, a the million dollar round table mm. award for this year mm. that's a goal that I really hope to aspire yes but that's not my key like my key the process is it yeah the, the key is still the process that I'm able to have 100 clients that really are my true followers mm. that's my key mm. monetary wise award wise uh, everything I mean I mean MDRT is not something that I couldn't hit like I, I, I almost cleared before in my, my peak of my career mm. it was just shy of a few thousand dollars yeah. I mean in terms of my commission it's just that at the point that it wasn't something that I, I have feeling about it mm. I then felt for it I just it just mainly, mainly of a, oh just there okay lots will be but it's not something I like mm. like I mean I'm it's just really something that I, that I wanted mm. so <clears throat> this, this year that I have a personal goal that I want to clear mm. it's just to challenge myself to really break through mm. But that's a very sales target. Yeah. But my true goal is to have that 100 followers that mm. I, my clients that are my true followers that listen to me mm. and I really build that great relationship with them. Mm. That, that's my true KPI. Yeah. Because again, you take care of that, the market, the market take care of you back. Mm. And that's what, actually, that is my motto that I always tell my clients. Mm. Your retirement is my retirement. Mm. I've been saying the last 10 years because mm. if I take good care of you, you take good care of me. Yeah. So that has been something that I also live by. Mm. So it's just that when I saw all these things, okay, how Gary posts all these things, and it just resonated with me. Mm. And like instead of focusing on the money, focus on really giving true value to that 100 people mm. that really listens and believes in what you do. Mm. I think that's more important. Then mm. that really will go a very long way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we see eye to eye on this page, yeah, yeah. in this sense, but Leslie, thanks so much for coming. Ain't I no think problem, I think yeah, we should definitely do another podcast. Like what I like to do, right? So we ask people on board for like a couple months down, sure, just sure. to because I feel like there's a lot of things we still haven't follow up or I not follow yeah. up on, but there's a lot of things that I'm sure that I can learn a lot from you. Uh, right? hopefully, hopefully, like, hopefully, hopefully, I can I can value at you. No, a de- decades worth of experience that's really a lot, right? So, uh, Leslie, for those listeners that want to reach out to you, how can they reach out to you? Which platforms are you most active on, and how can uh, they reach out? Actually, now right now, I'm most fo- I'm no. Uh, actually, I'm all very active on all three platforms, which is uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Mm. So, but What's LinkedIn your Instagram handle. My Instagram is uh, Leslie Co. Okay. Then uh, Facebook is just Leslie Co. And mm. uh, same for my Insta, uh, my LinkedIn. But mm. uh, I mean, I I'm trying to do this uh, also with a lot of other people. Mm. Oh, go on, it's okay. Okay, so. Uh, I have I, I, I posted this yesterday and I really want to do this really really do this and mm. if today you are a new advisor mm. okay you're a new advisor and you don't know what you want to do you want to learn video you want to learn branding you want to learn what I've learned uh, just text me just drop me a DM mm. and I'm willing to okay. share with you my processes what I do how I edit and how I do everything and I can share with you every single thing mm. but I have a promise I need you to make a promise to me the promise is you must do it Nice. If you're willing to do it, I'm willing to teach you because I feel that right. Growth cannot be. Uh, my growth is only that much. If today we have a community of people, or I have a small group of people, that we can learn together, we test things faster. Like we beta test, we A/B testing things. Like I try this method, you try this method, and see how can we work. Like example, let's just say I try A, you try B. A actually B works. But at my own capacity, I only can do that much. Mm. But with a collective of people, more we test. To test there's more results. resources. We can test things faster, and we get results better. Mm. So my advice, my 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 only uh so called ask ask from the person is you, you must promise me that you must do it. Mm. If not, don't don't come here and just steal from me. It's not steal, but like it's. I'm taking time that I could be spending coaching people. Opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. But I don't mind doing that because I believe by me sharing, I learn faster as well. And that's very true. Mm. I've met so many people for to learn mm. and to exchange ideas and I learn a lot faster. Yes. And a lot of maybe I I've been looking things one way. Mm. But because you came in the picture, you gave me a different perspective. Mm. Because I again I believe there's no new ideas under the sun. Yes. It's just new perspective. Yes. So whatever perspective I have, it's just my own. 
Maybe you give me a different perspective of things on how I could edit things. Mm. How could I position myself? Then make me a better person also. Mm. So it, I will still serve my own personal agenda of mm. growing. Mm. So that's something that I really don't mind people coming asking me. But again, you have to promise me you have to do it. If not, then there's I re- no point. I really do hope some people reach out. Yeah, to me, I also hope so. And I really hope they really do it because yeah. doing. One thing I realized about doing something right, it's not sexy in a yeah. sense where you do all this what I'm doing right now, it's not sexy like editing yeah. and everything. But you enjoy it. It's this yeah, process yeah. that you put yourself through as like this is interesting. This yeah. is interesting. But yeah, let's see, thanks so much for coming, man. Thank you, thank you, thank and you for having me yeah, on the show. Yeah. For listeners out there, please do reach out to him. I think he's very active on LinkedIn and Instagram as well. Yeah. And I really think that I feel that your passion and you're very genuine in what you do. And yes, right hook. If you definitely yeah. need someone, uh, definitely if you're in a space of wanting to know whether you're covered or in any space, right, I really do, do think that you are a guy to look for. Thank you, thank you very of, much. Yeah, that's why I think that you should, yeah, this, yeah, I feel that you're very genuine. Uh, very thank genuine. you, thank and you. That's thank something you. I really appreciate. So yeah, thanks so much, man. Thank you, thank uh, you. Uh, that's it for the 19th episode of the Learning Podcast. Wow. And yeah, see you in the next one. <laughs>